wrong for I wanted to drive the car to at least one race, and given I'm least likely to bin it with only me on track in a sprint race, it seemed Kerbera, the opening race of the season, was the perfect choice. Now, with all best laid plans in a caterham, I had planned on talking you through this journey all the way there, all three and a half hours of it, but I just dropped my microphone down the side of the seat <laughs> getting in the car, so if you think that I'm going to take all this out to find the microphone, I'm <laughs> sorry, I can't do that. I've already had to psych myself up for this whole journey, so hopefully you can hear this and I'll do something maybe a bit later or voiceover. So voiceover it is. After a quick stop, kind of en route to Piers Dow, the helmet sprayers, to pick up my new lid, it was a perfect time to remember that old phrase, all the gear and no idea. And 190 miles later, the car was well and truly warmed up and ready. So here we are, the first race of the 2021 Caterham Academy season. Albeit this one's against the clock and not with 25 or so other Caterhams together on track. There are seven races in total. This one, the Kerbera Sprint. Then May is at Mallory Park. June is at Knock Hill. July at Silverstone GP. August at Brands Hatch Indy. September at Croft. And it finishes in October at Snetterton. There was a really brilliant vibe in the pits. Helped in part that it was a beautiful spring day with just perfect weather conditions. I'm not quite sure I'll be saying the same about Snetterton in October. First up was the track walk, where everyone seemed quite chilled, even though the figure of eight needed some sort of concentration level to work out which way to go. Kerbera, by the way, is a sprint track located near Litchfield, which is in the centre of England. It's got this real charm, it's sort of small and quaint, and run by passionate people who clearly love all sorts of motorsport. The track is relatively tight, and most of it will be taken in second gear. The Academy car record is 65.34, set by Blair McConaughey in 2019. The only difference to this year over Blair's record setting time was competitors can't now warm their tyres up. So I hope you noticed the racing driver excuses are coming out already. So it was time for each car to head out for a couple of practice laps, where for many people, including my pit neighbour John, it was literally the first time they'd ever set foot in their own cars. And John makes a mean cup of coffee, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Practice didn't end great for me as I had a puncture, meaning I had to swap my rear offside tyre with an old front tyre. Now this typically wouldn't matter, but given the camber on the front wheels of a Caterham, things were not looking good. Enter racing driver excuse number two. But after a hearty lunch, it was down to business and to see who had what in the locker. I was up on the early pace in practice, but exceeded track limits on both of my runs. So I went out for a bit of a banker on my first time run and came in with a solid 67.42, putting me into third place overall. The early pace was set by Jeff Newman, who's definitely gonna be one of the star drivers of this series. Round two was super tight and most drivers were improving on their previous times. And one of the great things about this series is it doesn't matter what standard you are and watching people coming back into the pits with big smiles on their faces after beating their first runs was brilliant. Just before me and on the other side of my pits was young Freddie Chiddix, who together with many others was quietly putting in some quick times so the pressure was mounting. With my banker in the bag, I went a bit more gung-ho in round two and took over a second off with a time of 66 and a half seconds, keeping me in third place overall. I was really happy with my time, but I felt I had another four or five tenths as I kept getting massively out of shape on the big left-hander midway through the run. Interestingly, after two runs, only four one-hundredths of a second separated Freddie and myself from third place overall, so it was all to play for in the third and final run. My closest three rivals all went out before me and all improved on their previous times, with the leader in the clubhouse, Ian Harris, setting a sensational 66-14, with Jeff just one hundredth of a second behind him and Freddie smashing a 66-25. I knew I had a sub-66-14 in me, so it's time to bring home the gravy.
It felt brilliant. I was smooth, calculated, left foot braking, squeezing the gas. I even managed to nail my nemesis corner. Everything was going so well until the final sprint down to the line. <laughs> so near yet so far. <sighs> Sadly, I can't even blame the lack of tyre warming or my very unlucky puncture and I finished fourth place overall based on my inability to change from second gear to third. Massive congratulations to Ian and to everybody who raced. I met some lovely people and I really enjoyed every single minute of it. Huge thanks also to the marshals and to the team at Caterham for making it such a lovely environment to be around. So that was it, race one. Just picked a podium place. I blame the tyres, of course, and the sun and uh, the moon and everything else. But luckily for me, uh, my old mate Lucky Supercars has offered me a lift back in the height of luxury and the Caterham boys have taken my car back to Gatwick. So I'm gonna celebrate with the Magnus, I don't even like cider, but let's celebrate with a nice cold Magnus, sit back and enjoy the journey. Cheers.